Hi there, I'm Verified Champion Trader Kevin Davey and today I'm going to give you the week three update of my trading bot versus an AI trading bot with real money. How did they look through September? Well here they are. Which bot is which? Hey, let's dig into it and find out. Before we get started, if you haven't signed up for my free algo strategy, now's the time to do so. Hit the QR code or enter the link you see at the bottom or in the description you'll find a link. Sign up, you'll get this free algo and lots of other great information. So today I'm going to talk about a quick recap of the challenge just to bring everybody up to speed in case you haven't seen the earlier videos. I'm going to give you real money results through week three. We'll talk a little bit about back testing, and the big question is how far back do you back test? And so I'll give you some insight into that. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about slippage and commission, and I'll show you the difference between real fills and strategy fills. Okay, first things first the setup of this contest. I used ChatGPT to create an algo and then I selected one of my algos to compete against it and I'm trading both of them in the month of September with real money. There are the contestants. This is in TradeStation. I'm trading one ES contract for each of these. That's the mini S&P. I could trade the micro mini. You know, that's one tenth of the size but I decided to do a full ES contract for both of these. And just as background, in August, both of these produced good profit, above $2,000 each. Now that was hypothetical, that wasn't real money, but that's what led me to the column on the right to say for September, I'm going to do real money. Now, Let's look at the results so far through the first three weeks of the month. You can see the Kevin bot is plus $1,269. The AI bot is minus $1,670. So overall, since I'm trading both with real money, I'm down about $400 with this challenge. Not quite the way I wanted it. I wanted both to make money, but hey, that's how it goes. And you can see there's quite a big difference this week. They were pretty close up until this week, and then both had uh, one big trade. Obviously, the Kevin Bot had a big positive trade, and the next day, I think, the uh, or two days later, the AI Bot had a big negative trade. So that makes me happy at least that my bot is doing better than the AI Bot. I would have expected it to, but... <clears throat> You never know. Here's how all the bots that I talked about in the first video played out so far in September. Now four of these are just back tests and then you can see the AI bot with real money and my bot with real money. And you can see there's quite a big spread overall. My AI bot, my bot is making the most money and the AI bot is losing the most money so far but we still have uh, I think seven trading days to go so we'll see what happens that's the contest that's where we stand let's talk a little bit about back testing because I <clears throat> talked about that in earlier videos and I told you the importance of back testing and we saw how the Kevin bot was back tested properly and it's doing a lot better. Is it coincidence? I don't think so, but the AI bot, AI bot did not do so well, and it really wasn't back tested. <clears throat> so you might be saying, well, how long of a back test do I need to do? Uh, does the length matter? What is the sufficient back test length? The idea with backtesting is you want your strategy to experience 
different market conditions. And these could be varying day to day, but they could also be over a period of months or years. For example, early 2025, the markets acted a lot different than mid-2025. So it'd be nice if your back test actually experienced that and you saw how your strategy performed during all that time. Now a lot of people use tick data and the problem with tick data if you're doing a back test is your back test history is going to be limited. You're never going to get more than six months unless you go out and buy a lot of tick data and then you're likely to overwhelm any of your trading platforms because there's a lot of tick data and it's hard for the backtest platforms to process it. So generally people who use tick data do one to six month tests. Is that enough? Well, let's take a look. I put together a test where I ran different length back tests and I tried to correlate that to future performance. So you run the back test, you stop it today, and then you go and see what the performance is for the next few years. That kind of test, okay? And the question you're ask, asking is, does a certain back test period having a certain length make it perform better than a short back test of a couple months, okay? So here are the results, and so I'll explain it real quick. What we're going to show are the odds of a profitable back test and a profitable three-year test afterwards. So I'm looking with real-time results. So the back test is in the past, but the real-time results are going to be what it would have done the next three years after you ran the back test. Obviously, I did this all on old data, but I think you get the point. Along the x-axis, there's going to be the back test length in the number of days. So over on the left would be a very short back test. Over on the right would be about a 10-year back test. And then what I'm going to plot are the odds of the back test being correct, meaning if the back test says, hey, you should make money with this strategy, what did the real-time performance for the three years after the back test show? Okay. Obviously, if your back test was perfect at predicting the future, you'd have a hundred percent would be the goal. You want it. You want every back test that says, "Hey, I got a profitable back test." You want every one of those to make money in the next three years in real time, right? Now, obviously, it's never going to happen, but that's what we're aiming for. You again, you want not a profit only a profitable back test, that's important, but you want it to work in real time. That's the real test. That's what a lot of people who are out there back testing don't fully appreciate. They aim for the profitable back test part, but not the profitable real time. And you need both of those. So here are the results. This is for a couple strategies, so this isn't thousands of strategies or anything, but it, I think the, the general trend would kind of hold up. If you have a very, very short back test, that's profitable. Think like one day. You have a one day back test. Well, the chances of that strategy working the next three years after a one day back test are pretty low. In this example, it's around 30%. So chances are that strategy is going to lose money in real time. And then as you start to do a longer back test, you get a clump here where it jumps up a little bit. But that's still a one year or less back test. And then as you start to increase to one year, five year, up to ten year, your odds go up. Now at some point, I'd expect them to kind of level off. Um, because this would imply if you did a thousand year back test, you're guaranteed that it would be profitable the next three years. And, and that's never true. And you'd probably never have data for a thousand years anyways. Uh, so the general trend, though, is pretty clear. A very short back test, 
the odds of your strategy working in real time are pretty low. And the longer the back test, the higher your odds of good real time performance, profitable real time performance, the better those chances are. So that's just a small test, but for those of you who think, hey, I can get by with a one month or a three month test, realize that you're handcuffing yourself and your results are probably going to mean your real-time performance is going to suffer compared to people who are out here on the far right doing 10-year back tests. So hopefully I explained it well. If you have questions about it, just leave a comment in the video. But the general conclusion is longer historical back tests tend to work better in the future the strategies tend to work better. Let's wrap up today with talking about slippage and commission because that's a really important part that a lot of people ignore. It's crazy, but you have to properly account for slippage and commission when you're doing your back test. The reason is, is if you take out slippage and commission, most strategies you test that you run historical back tests on, most of them would actually make money. It's crazy, but a ton of strategies would make money if you ignore the real world costs of slippage and commission. So for this contest, the back test that I had run, I used $25 round trip slippage. This is per contract and five dollars commission round trip and that's for the mini s p obviously if it was the mes it would be less wouldn't be quite 10 percent less but it would be less than this and every market is different when you're trading futures you can use 25 dollars for quite a few markets but things like coffee uh things like feeder cattle if you're trading those markets, you better know the slippage because it's not $25, it's more. And if you underestimate it, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So you might say, well, okay, how do I check this? Here's the AI bot. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking my real world fills. So my real money performance, that's in the blue line. And I'm comparing it to the back test results with my estimates of slippage and commission in there. That's the orange line. And you can see the blue line is doing quite a bit better right now than the orange line. About $25 per round turn multiplied by, what, 16 trades so far. That's a sizable amount. And that's good. So if anything, my back test, if I ran it on the AI bot, would have been a little conservative and you'd much rather have that because sooner or later there's going to be some big slippage amounts that you didn't expect and it kind of evens out right now we see that the bot is doing better so that's a good thing and if you look at the kev bot there's only uh, i think four trades or so it's doing better too than what i expected so that's good also but it's always better to overestimate your slippage than to underestimate it. Okay, so that wraps up week three. Follow me on X KJ Trading to get daily updates. And we'll have another update at the end of week four. And we're also going to talk about maybe a new test. Maybe I'll discuss that. Maybe I'll discuss it because maybe I'll be having it. We'll see. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Let me know what you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Kevin Davey. Have a great day.